Hey guys, Vincent here, and these are some Prussian Light Cavalry Swords. This video will be a short overview about Prussian cavalry swords from 1811 until 1889. It is meant to give you an idea about Prussian swords, since I couldn't find any videos about this topic here on YouTube. We are going to start with the model of 1811, also known as the Blücher Saber, named after a famous Prussian field marshal. During the Napoleonic Wars, Prussia, like many other countries, got help from Great Britain in the form of weapons. Prussia got a lot of 1796 light cavalry swords, and they liked them so much that they started to produce these swords by themselves as early as 1811. The now called model of 1811 only differs in some minor things from its older cousin, the model of 1796. This new sword was then given to all three types of Prussian light cavalry, the Hussars, the Dragoons and the Uhlans. Oh, and some mounted artillery units got these sabers as well. This sword would serve Prussia very well and its distinctive horseshoe guard would become the standard for Prussian artillery swords until the Reich broke down in 1918. The next sword we're gonna take a look at is the very unknown model of 1837. Even 20 years after its adoption, Prussia still liked the M1811. But its very broad blade started to become a bit outdated. So trials were started and the first thing they came up with was basically a regular 1811 with a thinner blade and a slightly slimmer handle. This sword, called now the M1837, was however not adopted by the cavalry as the new standard sabre, but it got in the hands of some artillerymen and in 1848 it got issued to the artillery as the new standard sword. And just to be honest with you guys, what you see here is one of these 1848 artillery swords, because it nearly looks 100% identical to the M1837, and original 1837 swords are nearly impossible to find, so I'm glad I can at least show you this. In 1848, Prussia was involved in the First Danish-Prussian War. The weapon of the light Prussian cavalry was the now famous Blücher sword M1811. And the before so much liked sword got a lot of bad press after this war. Several regiments complained about the simple hilt that offered them not enough protection against enemy saber cuts to their hands. And so, after some very angry letters from some Hussars to the Prussian Ministry of War, trials were started. One of the products of these trials was the sword M1849. This sword would later be known as the Guard Hussar sword because this was actually the only regiment that adopted this particular sword. You can clearly see the big hand protection that was added to this sword to address the before named problem. But even though the very famous Gatusa regiment adopted this sword as their particular standard sword, it got not issued and adopted all along the light cavalry units. This honor would go to the sword M1852. Yes. In 1852, the Sabre M1811 was finally kicked from its throne and got replaced by a new sword. The 1852 has a long and only slightly curved blade, together with a robust steel hilt and a lot of hand protection. With the transformation from the very curved blades of the 1811, 1837 and 1849 up to the new 1852, you can clearly see that with this new sword, the Prussian cavalry units wanted a better balance between cut and thrust ability. After the adoption of the 1852 model, a lot of old 1811 swords were now available and then given to support units like horse depot units or even field bakeries. Oh, and by the way, the proud Guard Hussar regiment was also ordered to give up their unique sword M1849 and adopt the new 1852 model like the rest of all the light cavalry units. In 1879, after having carried the M1852 through the Second Danish-Prussian War, the Austro-Prussian War and the Franco-Prussian War, it was time for the old lady to get an update. After some trials, they replaced the whole blade with a new blade, a type of blade that features a pipe back. 
With this construction, the new Sabre was better designed for thrusting, since it added a lot of stability. Together with a new blade came also a new scabbard, with now only one ring to mount the scabbard onto the side of the soldier. One would think, after a change this big, they would also change the name or play the new pattern old pattern game. But no, this new sword was still called the Cavalry Sword M1852. Some collectors have used the term Sabre 52 79 to help them differentiate between the two swords, but again, this is not the official name for the sword. Like it happened with the old M1811 Sabre when the new 1852, the first model, was introduced, a lot of now obsolete old Sabres were now available and got issued to rear echelon troops. Now, let's take a short look at our last sword here on this list. This is the Cavalry Sword 1889. As you can see, this is not a saber anymore, it has no curved blade. During the trials for a new sword between 1886 and 1889, the Prussian army decided to go with a straight blade, perfect for thrusting, for all its cavalry regiments. And in the first time ever, the Prussian light cavalry was equipped with a back sword or palash type of weapon. They kept the pipe back design from the 1852 Sabre, but changed the handle completely. The handle is now made from an early type of plastic and it features a very ergonomic pistol style of grip. The hilt is made out of stamped metal and it features the Prussian Eagle. The Eagle was only present on Prussian swords. Bavarian regiments got their 1889 with Bavarian crests on the hilt, Hessian troops got the Hessian line instead of the Eagle, and so on. You get the idea. The sword 1889 was the last cavalry weapon ever to be adopted by the Prussian army. The Prussian light cavalry went into the First World War with this sword at their side, but like so many other nations, they quickly realized that it doesn't matter what type of sword to use against machine gun fire and mass artillery, swords became more and more useless. Okay, this is it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you again so much for watching. If you want, leave a comment or a like under the video so I can see what am I doing right and where to improve. And this leaves me with nothing else to say about. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.